so here is the skid plate or keel guard if you want to call it that for my Pro Angler 14. I've been using this thing for quite a while now. I've actually sold a few of these over the winter and now that summer's here I don't really want to take this off but if somebody really badly enough wants one I guess I'll make you one but um, this is it. It's not too hard to make, it's not too difficult. Um, you can see it's a nice tight fit going all the way around and you can do this for pretty much any kayak and you can probably do it for a canoe also but I'll get up close on the damage there the damage pretty much starts right here right where the nose starts to bend and that's some deep gouging from concrete probably and most of the damage stops right about there the rest of this that's just from sliding in and out of my truck so um, yeah there's no drilling there's no special tools required and that's probably the most skeptical thing about this is how it's held on and it's actually held on by two-sided tape now this piece right here is actually the very first one that I made and um, I just kinda wanted to test to see if the two-sided tape would hold up in water and it did it held, it held up awesome um, you know you can probably tell I didn't really care how this thing was formed I just kinda wanted wanted to uh, roughly fit it to the kayak just to see if it would work and like I said it worked awesome and to pry this off you can probably see like little lines right in here that's actually um, where a flathead screwdriver I had to jam it down in there to actually try and pry this thing off and there's some more right there and up front it got all ripped up so yeah it worked extremely well and this was on my kayak for about three months and there's the damage that it took so once I figured out that this actually worked I uh, I went ahead and made a nice one for it one that would actually looks like it's supposed to be on there so that's what I'm going to show you how to do I'm going to show you how to make these things it's not too hard at least for the thin one uh, the thick one which is this one that's the one that I have on the front right now but in this video I'm going to show you how to do the thin one the basically the same method is going to apply to the to the thicker one except it's a little bit more difficult to get this bend right there and this one isn't done yet you can see it still needs to be sanded and stuff like that this and uh, the front of this needs to be cut still but um, anyway I'm just going to show you how to make one of these thin ones so if you do want to make one of these you need to go to the plumbing section of your hardware store and this is actually irrigation pipe and this has the thickness of roughly one US quarter and um, this is the piece of irrigation pipe right here it's a uh, four inch by ten foot piece of irrigation pipe and that's all it is um, that ten foot piece cost me ten bucks I think if you want to do a thick one well you have two color choices you can do white and you just get regular PVC pipe or if you want to do gray because you know white I mean just for me personally white and and a camouflage boat does not go together so I chose to do gray on mine which I actually spray painted it black and then it shows up the uh, the scraping a lot better but if you do want to do a gray one you're gonna to have to go to the electrical section and this is actually PVC conduit I think I said that right and it's basically the same thing as this except it's a different color so um, there you go now um, I'm actually gonna pop this thing off which is kinda hard to do but before I do that um, I'm actually you can actually pick up the boat just by grabbing this and uh, I'm actually gonna set this camera up on a tripod and show you how strong that this tape actually is. Alright, so the boat's already about waist high and um, I do have it on a table and these, these boats are not light by any means. So, yeah, you can just literally grab the uh, skid plate and lift up the boat. So, you know, I don't know exactly how much this thing weighs, but um, it's probably over a hundred pounds and that was 
picking up most of the weight, not all of it, but the thing didn't even budge. And it's already been in a lot of water. So it definitely has no problem staying on there. All right, so now to actually get this thing off, you just take a really small flathead screwdriver and you just kind of have to work all the way around it. And it might take a while to do. You just want to make sure that you don't uh, gouge your kayak while you're doing this. And it shouldn't leave any type of residue or anything like that. I was actually taking this thing off a lot whenever somebody wanted to make uh, buy one of these. So I had to take this off and actually use my boat as a mold. Alright, now for the other side. And this is probably, I wouldn't say the worst part about this, but if you ever want to take this off, it's, uh, it's a pain to get off. And you would think that with it being in water, it would uh, it would not be as sticky as it is, but you would be surprised, because I certainly was. Alright, so now that I've pretty much worked all the way around it, I'm just going to take a, a bigger flathead. Go in the corner right here. And just kind of slowly shove it in there as I'm lifting up. And it, uh, it didn't leave any type of sticky residue. It didn't leave any of the tape pieces or anything. You can actually see the outline that I drew. It's, um, it's a lot easier if you put an outline uh, with a marker or something whenever you put this on. But yeah, it's completely, uh, it's completely fine. No residue at all. Alright, so I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this thick one roughly has the same thickness as three U.S. quarters stacked on top of each other. And this one has roughly the same thickness as one U.S. quarter. So this thing is going to wear out a lot faster. But this, I've been using this for a long time now, and uh, I have no problems at all. So, uh, just a side note. So the tape that I use is Scotch Outdoor, and that's very important, uh, 3M tape, two-sided tape. And it's uh, the 15-pound. Now, when I made a friend of mine one for his uh, Pro Angler 12, he actually bought this, the Scotch Extremely Strong tape. Now, this is actually indoor and outdoor, and it's uh, double the strength but whenever he took it out for the first time and got back to the boat ramp it was only halfway hanging on so this I would definitely not buy this I can definitely vouch for this actually holds up in water and um, it seems to do an extremely good job you can see it's for outdoor so I'm assuming it's made to hold up in uh, moist environments but I did not realize it was made to hold up underwater so Anyway, that's the tape. Um, the pipe I'm going to be using is this, the irrigation pipe, the thin stuff, because it's a lot easier to form, like I said earlier, and it's a lot quicker to work with. Uh, this is a torch that I'm going to be using, just a simple propane torch with a thing on the end of it. Now, if you want to make a thick one like this, I would not use this. I would actually use something like you would steam crabs with. Um, that, that's what I would use, and I actually have one of those, but it's in the shed. So uh, I'm going to be just using that. And some type of scissors, uh, household scissors will not do it. You're going to have to get like metal shears or tin snips, something like that. And actually, if you heat up this PVC pipe, you actually, when it gets really soft, you can actually cut it with a razor blade or either use household scissors, but it has to be soft first. And you are definitely going to need some type of really thick gloves. 
Um, these are the welding gloves that I weld with, so these are perfect for the job. Now if you do make this thick one, uh, what I would do is I would actually put um, a towel and some ice water and just cover this front end with um, trying to get it as cold as possible and uh, that way whenever you lay down the thick piece of PVC and you try to you know force it over with your hands um, it, it takes a long time for this to actually cool down so you don't want to warp your kayak when you do it and also I actually soak my uh, welding gloves in the same ice water and that seems to uh, to cool it down a lot faster because if you don't do it it's going to take a long time for this to actually reharden once it's really soft and um, another tip for this thick one you have to get especially the front end you don't have to I mean you have to get the back end really soft too but this front end I'll actually show you on this one over here this front end you see how it's stretched these right here are stretch marks and what you actually have to do is hold one end down and you take your other hand and you kind of pull it over so you're gonna have some stretch marks and um, anytime you have like burns like this it usually tears but I got lucky and it didn't it didn't tear but those are the stretch marks for me actually pulling it over the nose that thin one, you don't really have to do that. You can just kind of fold it over. But I found out that if you heat this up um, really hot and to, to the point where it gets extremely floppy, it's, uh, and then you pull it over the nose, it works a lot better than just trying to, uh, to bend it over. All right, so here's the piece. Oh, that's still hot. This is the piece of pipe. I grabbed the wrong end. This is the piece of pipe I cut. Um, it's roughly the same length as this one, which... I think it's somewhere around the 12 or 13 inch mark but uh, you're gonna have to do a lot of cutting on this anyway and normally um, what I will do next is I'll take the torch and there's kind of already like a line there I don't know if you can see that but I'll heat up just where the line is and then I'll take uh, my razor blade there oh, that's nice I'll uh, I'll take my razor blade there and just cut a slit right down it. And you don't really need to be perfect with this because you are going to shave a lot of this off anyway. Alright, so now, now that I got that cut in there, now what I'll do is I will heat up the whole thing and I'll make sure and use my welding gloves. Alright, so I just kind of laid it right there on the boat and it's basically rehardened now. It didn't really take that long to, uh, to get this entire thing soft enough to where it would fold like this. But um, it's basically rehardened, so I'm going to now basically just draw some marker lines and just kind of show you how much material to, uh, to take off of this. Alright, so I made some marker lines and um, I'm just going to cut off all of this and then I'll just be left with the middle. And the space in between is roughly about 5 inches, that's a good starting point. So if you, um, if you can find 2.5 inch irrigation pipe, that's probably all you're going to need. Um, you don't need this massive 4 inch pipe to do the job, but that's all I had whenever I went. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this with the metal shears and show you what's next. Alright, so here's what I'm left with, just a kind of flat piece of PVC and um, you know you kind of want to cut off the excess before you try to mold this to the boat because it's, it's a lot easier to work with compared to when you have a, a massive piece of PVC. Um, it's just easier to work with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat up this entire thing again and I'm going to work I'm going to basically fold it over and try to keep it centered and I'm just going to basically hold it down with my hands and I'm not going to worry about the front nose yet because that's the uh, that's the tricky part but the back section that's what I'm going to mold first alright so you got your floppy piece of PVC 
just stick it on there try to get it centered and just push down and hold down with your hands to where you want it and you can make you can make this thing as long or as short as you want it and you can uh, you can see it's not it's got some bubbling going on but that's no big deal we'll, we'll come back to that later so now I'm just going to work this this front nose and get that folded over and the only area that you want to heat up is just this front piece so you want to heat up from right about here this way you don't want to heat up anything that you just did because it's just gonna it's basically just gonna get flat again you wanna you wanna keep this rough shape so just heat up from right about here to the end alright so put it back on try to get it centered and you're just going to run your hand kind of down it like that and you want to squeeze with your index finger and your thumb and you're also pushing it down with the palm of your hand also alright so after it's hardened this is what it's going to look like you got some some major bubbling going on and whenever you bend this over with your hands you're going to feel all this, don't worry about it, you just want to get this basic shape down. You just want the, the PVC to fold over the nose and you might um, have to heat this up a few times to do it, but I've made a whole bunch of these things so I'm kind of used to it now. But uh, you see this side, you know, it's got a major bubble right there. And actually most of this is going to be trimmed out anyway, but there's still going to be a little bit of bubbling. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and make some marker lines and just trim what I don't need. Okay, so I'm basically going to have to cheat a little bit. I was actually pushing the record button and the memory was full of my camcorder, so I didn't even realize it whenever I was doing it. So I'm actually going to, this is actually the piece that I just finished doing, which you can see the shape is a little bit different. I was kind of going a little fast. But what I'm going to do is I am going to take this piece that is perfectly fine, I'm going to heat it up and get some bubbling going on, and I'm just going to try and recreate what you would have to do uh, in order to get it looking like this. Okay, so I kind of recreated what would happen after you uh, trim the excess off, and I got just two bulges on each side. Um, sometimes you would get like really tiny bumps which is no big deal the only thing that you have to do is you put the torch on low and you just heat up this one area you don't heat up up here or back here you just heat up this one area you want to do and once it gets soft you just put it on you slip it forward like that make sure you push down and then you just take the palm of your hand and you you push it in Alright, so you just put it on, you slip it on, and then you push down at the palm of your hand. And I probably have, shouldn't have the torch going like that, but as long as I don't shake the table, it'll be alright. Alright, so there it is. It's pretty, much, uh, it's pretty much just like it was, except there's some burn marks wherever I was heating it up again, but that's... Uh, that's Alright, so that's basically it. I, uh, I wish my memory card was empty before I started, but it is what it is. Um, you know, the bumps aren't too hard to get out. It's really easy to do. This thin one doesn't take a really long time. You know, I can make one of these in 10 to 15 minutes. It might take you a little bit longer your first time. But uh, yeah, it's really easy to do. And the main thing is, it prevents all of that from happening. So. Uh, as far as taping this, um, you know, I tape the entire thing, especially the edges. Now, whenever you want to, uh, to go to put this on, make sure that you clean this entire area with like Windex. That's what I use. 
I'm going to clean this entire area with Windex and if you have like little pieces of plastic coming off of your kayak take a razor blade cut those off if you have deep gouges you know take a toothbrush get all the dirt out you want it to be as clean as possible and um, practice putting this thing on a few times before you actually pull the tape out another thing that you can do is you can mark it like I did just mark all the way around it stick the nose on the marks and then just kind of lay it down just like that that seems to uh, to work best for a lot of people so yeah any questions at all feel free to ask I'll try and get back with you as soon as possible and I will see you guys on the next one